Hi everyone, my name is Kim Kian and I've got lots of questions about the law. So the law is this thing we see in the news so often, but then what does it do? What does it say? What is it all about? You ask me, I ask who? I ask my friend Simon. Ah. Hey Simon, say hi. Hi, my name is Simon. Yeah, his name is Simon. And you're watching OK Law. Hey, Simon, uh, you will know mm. we got a government, right? Yep, I know. So uh, we've got a parliament mm. and we've got a cabinet. But what I'm really wondering about is the courts. So actually, are the courts part of our government or are they just doing their own thing? Mm, that's a very good question. And yes, the courts are part of the government mm. and they are one of the okay. three branches. So the other two, as you mentioned, is the legislature and the executive. Mm, okay. Now, this system of a separation of powers was actually conceived in the early 1800s by a French mm, wow, statesman okay. called Montesquieu, okay. who himself got the idea from the Roman Republic of the need to divide power between the different branches of government. Okay, so how does the parliament and cabinet and the courts, how do they all fit into these three branches of government? So maybe we start with the first branch of government, okay. and that would be the legislature. Mm. So in Singapore, there are two components to the legislature. Uh, one is the elected president, okay. and the other is parliament. parliament all right. Now, to get to parliament, you have to either be an elected or non-elected member of parliament. Ah, okay. Yeah. So elected member of parliament, I think that is uh, quite easy to understand, right? It's those guys who won during the general election. Yeah, so speaking of the general election, I was actually really impressed by the CV of my candidate. Okay, so the guy is getting voted into parliament, right? That is quite straightforward. The elected MPs are the figures you see here in black in this diagram. Hey, but then, uh, uh, what about those who didn't get voted but who still got into parliament? Yeah, so this was the group I was telling you about just now, the non-elected MPs, which we see here in red. They consist of two different categories, the non-constituency members of parliament, or NCMPs, and the nominated members of parliament, or the NMPs. NCMPs have the same voting rights as normal MPs after the 2016 constitutional amendments, but NMPs do not enjoy voting rights on constitutional amendments, money bills, and votes of no confidence in the government, just to name a few. Hey, other than that, uh, what is the difference between an NCMP and an NMP? NCMPs can vote on any issue in Parliament, but do not have a constituency to take care of. And currently, we have two NCMPs in Parliament from the Progress Singapore Party. NMPs are not affiliated with any political party and wouldn't have to take part in the general elections, but are nominated to Parliament to offer a diverse viewpoint. Actually, NMPs are appointed on different parameters compared to the other NCMPs and MPs. So they are appointed for a term of only two and a half years on the recommendation of a special select committee and the elected president. So let me try to understand this. The legislature makes the laws and the executive executes? That's right. The executive executes government policies and it is headed by the elected president and also includes the cabinet. Okay, so the cabinet, I can understand, it is uh, generally responsible for the direction of government policy, right? That's correct. So the cabinet ministers are assisted by their ministries to execute government policies. Wait, wait, wait. So uh, what is so different about what the cabinet ministers do and what parliament does? Well, the cabinet consists of cabinet ministers and the prime minister, who commands the confidence of the majority of the MPs. Everyone in the cabinet is also a member of parliament, and the cabinet ministers are specially chosen from parliament by the elected president on the advice of the prime minister. So the cabinet ministers are in both parliament as well as the cabinet? Exactly, and that is why you see a purple overlap in the diagram here. Hey, hey, hey Simon, do yeah. you know what the leader of the cabinet should be called? No. Minister Prime, la. you know, like Optimus Prime? No, no, no. Optimus no, Prime is no, if funny. No, no. Halfway, la. No, please, it's, please, it's not, please. It's not funny. No. Hey, okay, Simon, so correct me if I'm wrong. La. Okay. So the PM is like the chairman and managing director. Okay. Then the cabinet is like the board of directors. Okay. Then everyone else is. Uh... No. Okay, okay. So my next question is where does the elected president come in? And actually, why do we keep saying elected president? Why don't we just say president? I mean, like nobody says elected president Trump or elected president Biden. That sounds very funny. Yeah, but that's because the president of Singapore 
is different from the President of the United States. Different in what sense? Well, for starters, they don't look the same. Hey bro, if you think they look the same, uh, you need to get your eyes checked, man. Yeah, it's a joke, come on. <laughs> but on a more serious note, our president functions as the head of state for the 2016 Constitutional Commission. And as the head of state, she rises above the form of politics to unite the nation. Hey, so uh, what else uh, actually does the elected president do? I mean, on a normal day, she has to go for ceremonies and all that, right? Like waving to people during NDP, attending concerts like the President's Challenge or carrying babies. Eating good food, good buffets, taking selfies, wow, sounds like a good life. Huh? Well, yes, she does have to do those things, but the elected president also has to pass every law that the legislature makes and can also veto government budgets and key public appointments. Here's a fun fact about our current president, Madam Halima Yaakob. She is an alumni of NUS Law, our first female president, and the first female Speaker of Parliament before that. But actually, she had very humble beginnings in helping her mother sell nasi padang outside Singapore Polytechnic. Wow, okay, no wonder she knows what good food is. Okay, so back to the question I had at the start of the episode. Where do our courts fit into the whole system? So our courts make up the judiciary, the third branch of government. Within the judiciary, it comprises the Supreme Court and the State Courts. And within the Supreme Court, there is the Court of Appeal and the High Court. Wow, so many courts. Uh. Actually, if I want to sue my friend, right, which uh, high court, low court, tennis court do I bring him to? Why do you want to sue your friend? Okay, oh, but money, how, how much are you suing him for? Actually, I want to give him one times go and making them scared. How much to bring him to the Supreme Court? Well, technically speaking, any member of the public can go to the Supreme Court to watch a trial. Uh, but to answer your question, the Supreme Court will only hear claims of $250,000 and above. Ah yeah, disappointing. He only owes me like $250. There's no thousand behind that? No. Okay, then you might want to try the small claims tribunal instead. Okay, okay. Anyway, I still want to know, uh, what are the judges you can find in the Supreme Court? Now, I'm guessing it's a Supreme Court, so they can be pretty big, right? So you can find um, the Chief Justice in the Supreme Court, Judges of Appeal, the okay. next most senior, then the mm -hmm. normal uh, Justices of the Supreme Court, and finally you mm -hmm. have the Judicial Commissioners as well. So all of them are actually appointed by the President, mm -hmm. okay. and they are in there for a life term, except the Judicial Commissioners. Hey, I also heard about this thing called the jury. Does Singapore still have juries? Um, so no, we actually abolished the jury in 1970, and the okay. judge takes over that role now. Uh, but not to worry, it doesn't mean that the judge does everything. Okay, bro, I'm going to summarize everything right now. So mm. correct me if I'm wrong once again. Okay. Okay, so today we learned about the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. And we learned also that the ministers who live inside the cabinet, uh, sorry, sorry, the ministers who are part of the cabinet, they are actually part of both the cabinet and they are members of parliament. So they are members of the executive as well as the legislature. And what we also learned was that it's very expensive to get to the Supreme Court. It takes a claim of more than 250k and above. Right now? Yes, I mean, there are other ways to get to the Supreme Court, like committing a capital offence, but yes, you're right. Okay, okay. So I've got one more, one more burning question. Yeah, what, what is it? Hey, you think our president are the nasi barang nice now? 